Hello everyone, uh, this is Ryan Dunbar, member of the EdTech team, and I'd like to just walk you through the basics of uploading files to Canvas in an organized way. So, the first thing you do is you need a file that you need to upload. Most teachers I notice use Microsoft Word, which means they have .docx files. So let me just show you how I would upload a file to Canvas using this document, uh, this literary paragraph rubric, but it'll work for whatever Word document you happen to be uploading. So the first thing, um, believe it or not, is .docx files aren't the best to upload to Canvas because they're not going to be as compatible for students as other file types will be. For example, .pdf files are much more compatible for students because they work a little bit better across platforms. So, to transform this .docx into a PDF, which will be more compatible for the students, you click on File, and then Save As. Now you can see the name is going to stay the same, so we leave that. I like to put them on desktop for the purposes of this instructional, please save it where to the desktop. And then finally in format, you click on PDF. Then you click save. Now what you'll notice is I can exit this out because on the right side of the screen I have a PDF file which is otherwise exactly the same as my docx but is in a different format, a more compatible format. So now it's time for Canvas. I'm going to go to my web browser, and any web browser is fine, and I'll click on Canvas. And then after I'm in Canvas, I want to go to the course that I'd like to upload the file. So I'll click on Courses, then English to Dunbar because this is for sophomore English. Now I'm uploading a file to that course. So I'll click on these arrows over here and go down to Files. Now that I'm at files, you'll see it's actually really easy to upload a file if you've put the file on your desktop because it's just drag and drop. So you can see I can just drag this PDF and make sure it's the PDF right into here, release, and it uploads. It's that simple. So now that it's uploaded, uh, I want to take one more step with the file itself. Instead of just leaving this page and moving into my modules now, I want to organize this a little better because if you just leave the files on their own, by the end of the year you are going to be just swimming in a mess of unorganized files. So what I'm going to do is add a folder and the folder is going to be called literary paragraph. And then after you add the folder you have to hit enter um, just to make sure it adds so I hit enter. And now I'll take my PDF that I just added, drag it and drop it into the literary paragraph folder. So now anything I upload, any files I upload that have anything to do with the literary paragraph, like for example a sample literary paragraph or instructions for completing the literary paragraph or notes on the literary paragraph, I'm going to put all of those files into that folder so that I keep myself nice and organized. So now the next thing I need to do is actually let my students have access to this file. So I'm going to go back to my lines, click on them, and now I'm going to go to Modules. Now you'll see each of the folders I actually have in my file section, there's an accompanying module, and I would recommend that just to keep yourself really organized. For every module, there is a folder. So now let me go down to my module of Literary Paragraph. Now I want to hit the plus sign, and I'm going to be adding, of course, a file. Now this is where the folders really come in handy because instead of just being a long list of files, each bolded section is actually one of the folders I created. So I can go down to the folder for literary paragraph and you'll see that my literary paragraph rubric is sitting right there for me to click on and then I can add the item. Now that it's added, you could see it automatically publishes, but the module isn't published so I have to make sure I publish that. So now that should um, give my students access to the PDF file that I want them to have in an organized way. However, one last kind of fail-safe is I like to just check the student view to make sure that the students can actually see it and make sure I've actually been successful in what I've tried to do. So I'm going to click on the, arrow, uh, the lines again, go down to settings, and then I'm going to go over here to student view. Now I'm seeing the page as a student sees it, and sure enough, literary paragraph, literary paragraph rubric, and it is a PDF, which means it will be very compatible and my students can easily use it. And 
it's organized in a way that next year it won't be a problem finding it throughout all my files. So now that I'm, now that I'm done with that, um, and you've successfully done that, one last thing, I'm just going to X out of Canvas, and this is just for your own personal organization. You'll now see I have these two new files on my desktop. If you were to do this throughout the year, your whole desktop would just be filled with files. So I recommend now just taking a moment to organize these files in some way. I like to use Google Drive, and in Google Drive you'll see some files that have like the person there. Um, that means they're shared. I don't necessarily want to share these ones with my colleagues right now. I might later, but um, what I'm going to do is drag and drop it into these personal folders that I've created. So now that I'm done with that, my desktop is nice and clean, my files are organized, and my students have access to a file that is very compatible for them, no matter what device they're using. If you have any questions, feel free to stop by or make an appointment with any of the members of the EdTech team. Thanks. Have a great day.